watch. Hello. Uh, I'm wielding two uh, little standing pointy things um, this evening, so I'm going to try and not get myself confused. Um, firstly, I'm really excited to, for the first time in my life, be north of the Arctic Circle here in, in Tromsø. This is the furthest north I have ever been in my entire life on the ground. Um, and I'm also excited because this is my first TED talk. And um, I personally think that um, TED is, is an exciting movement because it's about ideas. It's about um, sharing ideas. And this, is, this idea that I'm going to talk about this evening is a very old idea, but it's also a very new idea. And the idea is, a bit like Ted, that if we all club together, we can make something interesting happen. And that really, to me, is it's the heart of Ted, it's the heart of this talk. It also happens to be the thing that underpins probably one of the biggest changes in my life um, so far. Um, there's a big inflection point coming, which I will explain a bit later. So, there is a whole number of different ways that we can uh, talk about um, this idea of, of chipping in. There was the idea of, of public subscription, where people would uh, give money to, say, have a monument built. Um, there's the idea of patronage, where people uh, pay for art to be created. Um, and what we're doing uh, these days is we're calling it crowdfunding. The idea that um, if you have uh, a group of people, each with a little bit of money, uh, that they can together create quite a large pot of money, which makes an idea happen. And the concept behind it is really quite simple. You have your idea, you have your goal, so this is the amount of money that you need to raise in order to make the thing happen. Um, you need rewards, something that you're going to give your supporters in return for their support. And you need a deadline. When is this all going to happen by? And once you've got those uh, in place, then you pick a, a crowdfunding site. And there are loads of these uh, springing up all over the place. Um, and then you tell the world. Once, again, again, you tell the world's dog, you tell everybody that you know until, frankly, they wish you'd just shut up about it. And eventually, hopefully, you reach enough people to raise enough money to see your project completed. Uh, the other option is that you only raise a little bit, uh, and in that case, um, back to the drawing board, learn some lessons, try again uh, later. Um, and it's a really simple idea, but it's simple ideas that have such a big power to transform. And my idea as well was really very simple. My idea was to write a novella, so that's like a long short story, uh, have it printed, and then hand make books to send to my supporters. And this is a really common kind of project for crowdfunding. Um, it's very typical. Artists have always been drawn to this sort of model because artists tend to have quite a strong relationship with their fans and, and with their supporters. And we can trace this back to uh, musicians uh, like Annie DeFranco, who in the 90s decided that the the sort of traditional music industry way of doing business was not quite what she wanted. She wanted something that was a bit more intimate, a bit more personal, and, and something that ethically fit in with her beliefs. Um, and so you know, musicians have always had this direct relationship with their fans, and crowdfunding for artists uh, of all types is really a natural progression to tap directly into your fan base and raise the money that you need in order to see your artistic vision come to fruition. It's easy, too, to test the waters. Does anybody actually want me to do this project? Is there a demand? How many people are interested? And so I chose uh, a website um, based in America called Kickstarter. And it really is the big daddy of crowdfunding websites. 
Musicians, filmmakers love this kind of site, love Kickstarter. And actually, um, film and music gets more pledges than all the other categories of project combined. But if arts was all this was, it wouldn't be a revolution, it would just be an evolution. But recently, there's been a really significant shift, uh, which I think is, is really uh, important and is showing us a path to the future, which is that innovation is blooming on Kickstarter. The technologists have arrived. Having created the site, the geeks are now using the site. Um, and I have some, some examples. This first example is called a wing stand. It's a very simple idea, very beautifully executed. It's simply a couple of small bits of plastic that allow you to sort of mate your wireless keyboard and your tablet or your iPhone so that it's a bit like a laptop. It has that usability of being able to hold your uh, tablet up without having to uh, uh, strain your wrists. And this was uh, a project, the, the guy who started it wanted to raise $9,500 to cover the upfront costs, because obviously if you're going to make something, there is an initial cost hurdle that you need to overcome in order to uh, be able to go forward. He ended up, I checked this morning, he ended up actually with uh, 1,423 supporters, having raised $55,621. This project is still live. If you like the look of it, it closes tomorrow, so go home and support it. Um, but this is kind of like a lot of artists use Macs, so maybe you know, this is quite clearly a sort of Mac-related project, so maybe this is just about the existing Kickstarter community just liking the look of a bit of tech. Um, this is the Kamuk, or the Camping Kamuk. Uh, ultra light, ultra strong, and this is, is innovative in terms of the materials that it's using. But I don't know about uh, you know, Norwegian artists and musicians. Most of the musicians I know and artists I know wouldn't be seen dead camping uh, unless there was a nice kind of hotel to uh, stay in while they did it. Um, so maybe we're actually moving a little bit out of the core crowdfunding community. Maybe we're getting now into hikers and campers and people who, who like the great outdoors. Um, again, check this morning. They just wanted to raise 15,000, and that was because they had a minimum order cost. Below that cost, it wouldn't really be viable for them to actually produce the Kamuk. Uh, they've ended up with... Um, nearly 1,400 supporters. They've raised $147,419. Uh, they have six days to go. Uh, and that's actually, we're getting into some pretty impressive numbers now. Uh, if I could raise $147,000, I think that would, that would see me done for a couple of years, actually. Um, the next project, this one is awesome in its elegance, its simplicity. This is the TikTok, um, and it's uh, Cousin the Lunatic. These are watch straps into which you put an iPod Nano, which becomes the watch face. It is just the coolest thing ever. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Why did I not have this idea? Seriously. Again, uh, the guy who invented uh, this, a guy called Scott Wilson, he only wanted you know, $15,000, that'll cover the startup costs. Um, and if we think about this, $15,000, if your average pledge is $75, then you're going to need about 2,000 people to reach your target. Um, he reached 13,500 people and raised nearly a million dollars. Mind blown completely. This is the most successful Kickstarter project in its all of two year history. Probably the most successful crowdfunding project to date. Um, and it's just kind of. Just for emphasis, <laughs> sorry, I swore this wouldn't be about the big numbers, but ultimately, actually, it really is about big numbers, um, because 
13 and a half thousand backers, uh, you need to reach a huge number of people. If we kind of think about um, you know, how much this is, this is like angel investment level. This is kind of starting to get into VC funding level. This is a big number. But you don't just get that by accident. If you assume that half of 1% of everybody who heard about the project funded it, and that's about how many people reply to junk mail that lands in your, your letterbox, that would mean he needed to reach 2.7 million people to get this kind of level of success. So you can't just be cool, you can't just have a cool project. You actually have to get it in front of an inordinately huge number of people. And this was something that I discovered the hard way, in that my project, which was a teeny tiny project, uh, was on the verge of really just not going anywhere, not getting funded. And I kind of made peace with the idea and thought about the valuable life lessons I had learned when Kickstarter uh, decided to do a weekly newsletter. And they featured my project. And uh, I was on holiday at the time, sitting in a hot tub in Colorado with a glass of wine. And when I looked at my email, it was just Kickstarter, 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 all the way down and further down. And it was like, wow, actually, this is what it means to get in front of enough people. But if you don't have the social capital, you have a problem. This guy, this is an awesome project. This guy, he wants to find a lost Leonardo da Vinci. There is a fresco in the Palazzo Vecchio uh, in Florence, which was painted over by a guy called Giorgio Vasari, who came shortly after Leonardo da Vinci. This guy is trying to raise $266,000 in order to create a gamma ray camera, which has never been made before. Supporters currently are pledging about $60 each. He needs to reach at least a million people. And he does have a month and a half to do it, but this is a bit of a big problem. And I think this is the next challenge for us, because we've moved from gatekeepers being uh, record labels or publishers or VCs or what have you, into gatekeepers being the people who have access to huge networks. If that project ended up on the New York Times or you know, the BBC or what have you, he'd probably reach his target because he'd reach enough people. So although for many, crowdfunding is better than the traditional grant system. For artists, you've got less paperwork, always good, more creative control, no nasty little strings attached. But have we just swapped one set of gatekeepers for another set of gatekeepers? Is crowdfunding actually just a really high stakes popularity contest? Um, I hope not. I actually think that um, crowdfunding is still its own acorn. It's still sprouting. It's still growing. Um, Kickstarter started just a couple of years ago. There are now so many imitation sites. There are so many imitations, it's not quite a word. So many other sites um, based in places like Europe, the UK, Australia, which don't require you to either be an American with an American bank account or have a handy American husband stuffed down the back of the sofa with an American bank account, uh, which Kickstarter unfortunately needs. So we have these mechanisms for creating projects. We need a mechanism now for discovery, for marrying people's passions with other people who share the same passion. So I know from my experience that there actually is a community of people out there who love uh, geeky stories told uh, in, in handmade books, uh, hand embroidered laboriously over many hours. Um, I just have to find these people. I just have to get out there and figure out who's who and, and, and where are they. Luckily for us, the internet is really, really good at that kind of connection. So we have the pieces of the puzzle, we just need to put them together in the right way. But Kickstarter isn't just about finding awesome projects. It is very good at finding awesome projects. I, I do warn you, it is quite addictive. Do lock up your wallet before you look. Um, but it allows people to do stuff that would be almost impossible the traditional way. As a writer, what publisher is going to pay a first-time writer money for a novella which they then probably can't actually sell? Not very many. 
how many publishers are willing to let a first-time uh, author say, well, you know what, I'm actually going to hand-bind some of these, and it may take me several months, but it'll be okay. It's just, you know, not going to happen. So for me, having spent a long time as a, a technologist focusing on, on social, I'm now standing really on the edge of a brand new career, a career as a writer, as a bookbinder. Um, and I know, because of my experience with Kickstarter, I know there are people out there who are interested. And I know that there are projects out there that I'm interested in. And the idea that so many people can benefit from the support of uh, a small but growing community, for me, this is amazing. Crowdfunding is a low-risk way of funding people's passions, making their ideas become real. It's not just about starting a business or writing a book. It's, it's everything from you know, writing, doing something small for you and your friends to starting something big, starting a movement. And for me, this opportunity to touch so many people and to form relationships with so many people in the process of realizing my dreams that I've held since I was that high, that's revolutionary. Thank you very much. <laughs>